Jeremiah 2911 with your host, Dr. Marisol Peltzer, and my husband, Reverend Dexter Peltzer. Amen. And today we're so blessed to have our spiritual mommy, Mary Kay Paxter, with us. And the topic for today is dreams, visions, and revelations. You know, dreams and visions and revelations. Many people ask, is that for today? Is that for today? And you know, God is the same always. He doesn't change. And you know, and the Word of God teaches us in Acts 2.17 that in the latter days, people will be empowered by the Holy Spirit Amen. and that they will see visions, they will have dreams, and they will prophesy. And a lot of people wonder, can that happen to me? Can that happen to me? And I'm here to tell you that that can surely happen to you. The only thing that you need to do is to desire the gifts of the Holy Spirit and seek God in spirit and truth. And He, the Holy Spirit, will distribute those gifts as He wishes. You know, in Genesis 46, 2, we see that God spoke to Israel in the visions at night. And that he said to Jacob, his son, I am here, I am here. Are you willing to wake up at night when the Lord calls you to speak to you? Or to show you something? Or to take you on a vision or on a journey with him? Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to open your heart to receive the new things that has, God has for you? Are you willing to walk with a new skin and a new wine? Are you willing to do that? You know, last week I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I want to experience heaven. You know, I've been walking with Mary Kay, and she talks about heaven. And when she tells the stories, you can't help but to desire to see heaven. So I asked the Lord to, to, um, to, <clears throat> to show me heaven. And around Tuesday or Wednesday, I woke up. And when I woke up, I had a vision. The roof of my house went back. Like it was a garage door, completely like that. And my whole bed went up to heaven. And the Lord took me and my husband to heaven. And I woke up and it was like, I told them, ah, I saw, I saw it, I'm going to heaven, I'm going to go to heaven. And, you know, I kept Amen. proclaiming that. And last night, the Lord took me to heaven. I have never experienced that. And the Lord took me to heaven to show me the gifts, the rooms or storehouses of the gifts he has to release to the church. He showed me buildings of buildings. It was like a city of warehouses. And inside there were the most beautiful gifts to be released to the church. He, I saw things made out of glass and materials that I have never seen before. And he would tell me that these gifts, some of them have never been given to the church. And there were mantles and things that people were to do. And some were mantles of the saints that already went. And they were in tables. The tables were different sizes and different colors. And it was divided by times and seasons. And he showed me um, the, the mantles, of the, uh, the mantle coverings of some of the saints that had passed that had not imparted their mantles. And they were there to be released again. And then he showed me um, uh, bases. He showed me my great-grandmother's base. She was a woman of God, married to a preacher. And he says, that was your grandmother's uh, mantle and her gifts and, and is up here. And it was amazing. He showed me all these things. He showed me so many things. And it's what's so amazing that all these beautiful things are there to be released. So are you willing to ask the Lord to release it to you? To give you those gifts? To walk in a life of sanctification and holiness and seeking Him? 
as deep calls on to deep for the Lord to reveal these things to you? Are you walking in such a way that God can trust you with these things? It is amazing. I will never be the same. I have never seen such beauty, so much magnificent. I woke up and I was like, oh, I was just like amazed. I don't feel the same. I'm going to tell you this. I can't wait till I get to heaven. Amen. I love my family. I love my husband. I love my ministry. But you know what? Heaven is a magnificent place. A magnificent place magnificent place I've never seen anything like it I don't even have words to describe the things that I see amen and I want to read to you from um, Daniel um, the second chapter um, verse number 19 and it says during the night the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision then Daniel play, praised the God of heaven. Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. I thank and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and power. You have, known, have, you have made known to me what we ask of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. I just I simply asked him, Lord, show me heaven, and he did. And I am a housewife. You could do it too. Amen. Amen. So, Dexter, tell us about dreams and visions and the revelation of God that needs to be revealed. Amen. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, and we're here with Mama, of course, Mary, Mary Kay Baxter. And we're just before I get started, though, I, I want you to. Stay to the end because we're going to pray a prayer of activation. The Lord has shown us even from what Marisol went through and the night before we had prayed with Mama for like nine hours straight and we had visitations and things happening and then the next day it continued. So there's a lot of things that are happening and the Lord wants us to pray and activate. But before we do that, we're going to go to the scriptures, the word of God, and we're going to build the foundation for this, the rock, the foundation, which is the word of God for what we are going to pray later on with um with mama and so as we start let's just raise our hands and say yes. pray father in the name yes. of jesus we love you we just surrender to you completely this day Ooh, oh, hallelujah oh, chapel, you are so chapel, beautiful chapel. father of lights <coughs> father of our glorious <coughs> son jesus <coughs> christ we come to you we bless your holy name and father we don't want the same old same old we're not willing to sit in our church pew and just sit there and go home we ask you to open up our eyes to see, our ears to hear what the Spirit would say to each one of us and our hearts to receive, Father. And Father, let this be a new day and a new way for us to understand your word. Reveal it to us, Holy Spirit. Just teach us. Reveal it to us. Unwrap these gifts. Unwrap them in our hearts and prepare us for them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we have a lot of expectation because we've had like we said, heavenly encounters, and they continue through yesterday and then t through last night. And it's, it's amazing. We've had angels, rows of them in our household. And it, it's, just, it's just beautiful. And I'm telling you, but it's all for a purpose. Yes. And, and the Lord has shown us that. And that's why we're going to pray and activate a lot of this um, into the body. And that's what we're about. The Lord, Word of God says what you have freely received, freely, freely give. Yes. What we have freely received, we have always committed to the Lord, all three of us, that we will right. freely give. And that's what it's all about. Um, so let's go to the scriptures. And I'm going to read quite a few scriptures, so I'm not going to take a lot of time to explain them, because I want the word of God to sink deep into you and build the foundation here. And we're going to start out with James 1.17. Every good gift yes. and every perfect gift is from above. And comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Amen. Amen. Our Father is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The gifts that were given even to the apostles, that were given to the disciples, and many of them in Acts we see to ones that were not apostles and carried on well past the apostles. 
were gifts of God that the Word of God teaches us about. And our God doesn't turn. He doesn't give gifts and take them back. And I want to build a second foundation. The Word of God says the gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. Romans eleven twenty nine. I want you to stop and understand the purpose of this. Jeremiah 29, 11 is the foundation of this teaching that we do. And it is, for I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, and plans for hope and for a future. He has plans, and he makes this clear for every one of us. But he has a calling for every one of us. And he has gifts to give for that calling for every one of us. And we're going to establish that in the Word of God. And then once we receive those, we're to use them to bless our brothers and sisters in the body and to serve him and bring in the harvest. Right. The Word of God is going to be very clear on this. But I want to start out with the foundation. Of every perfect gift comes from above from heaven. And he distributes them. Marisol didn't even share part of a dream was she saw like three boxes and they were dressed up like a package, like a present you would get with beautiful, almost like a live flowers on them and, and ribbons and everything in these crystal boxes. And, and they had diamonds, gifts diamonds, and diamonds and, and they had gifts. Yeah. But where are they coming from? The Lord God Almighty is showing us, and I pray you get this revelation, that every perfect gift comes from above. Amen. It doesn't come from earth. It doesn't come from earth. It comes from him. So let's continue to build this foundation. Matthew 7, 11. Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. Father, just teach us your word in Jesus' name. Matthew 7, 11. It says, this is really a pretty cool pa um, passage because the Father is teaching us to knock, seek, knock, and ask. And he does this in another set of scriptures. He's saying, you know, you don't ask because you don't receive. And he's teaching us when you knock, guess what? The door will be open. When you seek, you will find. And when you ask, it will be given to you. And he says in verse 11, if if you then, being us children on earth, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father who is in heaven give good things, the good gifts to those who ask him? So there's a foundation here. Ask. And when Marisol asked, and I, I, you may have missed that, but <laughs> and she did something. We're kind of quirky, so I'm just going to share this. We have a picture like of heaven, and in, in heaven is on the top in, in our in our house, because we like a lot of artwork. She turned the picture upside down so heaven came down to earth. Literally, heaven was down in our house on earth. She turned it down, and when she was going to bed, she said, Lord, I would like to go to heaven. I, I asked to go to heaven. And, to, and as a prophetic act, I'm going to show heaven coming down to earth. Well, she did. <laughs> you don't believe in prophetic acts? You need to read Jeremiah? Yeah. She yeah. turned the picture upside down. She turned it upside down, so heaven came down to earth. Amen. <laughs> and again, if, like I was saying, if you don't believe in prophetic acts, you need to ask the Lord about that. And you need to read Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and many other books. Amos, I mean, many of them, had, did, had, they did prophetic acts for the Lord. And you know, Dexter, when I did that, I told the doggy, I'm going to heaven. <laughs> and I went to bed. Amen. And you know, and the Lord wants to give us gifts because in my visitation, in heaven, Mary and Dexter were with me. And I'm like, Lord, there's all these gifts. I want more gifts. And he's like, yes, I'm going to give you more gifts. And I'm like, yeah. And he was like, he was like rejoicing that he was going to give me more gifts. And it was Ooh, amazing. Hallelujah. He Amen. wanted to give the gifts. He says they're here for me to give away, but nobody's asking. Thousands of them. Thousands. Rooms and rooms, rooms and warehouses. And full. Rooms yeah. and rooms. I saw this floating curia. It was like the size of a wall, like maybe five feet by four feet. It was see-through, and it was glass made see-through, and it had all these bases, all colors, beautiful, made out of things I've never seen before. You know, and I've been to the Louvre, and I've been to Venice, and all those places where they have beautiful, beautiful things. Beautiful glass and all. And beautiful mm -hmm. glass. I have never seen anything on the earth like that. And he was like, those are gifts that I have for my children, but they're delicate, and they're very refined. 
and you have to really take good care of it to, in order to receive it. You got to be ready. And it was be amazing. ready. And can I stop on that, Marisol? Yes. Amen. And just we again, we've been preaching a lot about holiness, obedience to God's word, surrendering your total life to Him, everything. Father, in the name of Jesus, I surrender all to you, with no restrictions to to walk in the calling you have for me, to receive the gifts you yes. have for me, the spiritual gifts, and to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to be led by you. I choose to deny myself, take up my cross, and follow you all the days of my life and to be holy as you are holy in the name of Jesus. And I pray you pray that with me because we repeat that over and over again because the Lord has made it very clear in order to walk with the responsibility of the gifts because you are responsible for every gift you are given. That's the whole thing about the talents. To one was given five. What did he do with them? He made five more. To another was given two. What did he do with them? He made two more. He multiplied them. The other was given one. He buried it, and he was cast into hell. You have a responsibility. So God prepares us, sanctifies us, and prepares us in holiness to carry the gifts. Right. That is a <clears throat> precursor. And I, I don't, Ooh, we're going to focus on the gifts, but I don't want anyone to lose that. That is critical in order to be responsible and know how to carry those gifts for the Lord. Because you will be responsible for every use of them for good or for evil. The word of God is clear about that. Now that I've established that, hallelujah, let's go back to the gifts because we have a, a wonderful prayer. Ephesians 1.3. Let's continue here. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And the Greek word for that, by the way, is the same as 1 Corinthians 12. You're going to see a link here. 1 Corinthians 12 is all about the spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters. Can you imagine? He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. You're not going to get them looking around in the world and desiring the things of the world, you're going to get them with your eyes on Jesus, worshiping, praising him, giving your life to him. That's what this is about. But every spiritual blessing, as Marisol said, is waiting. Every one of them. Now, let's keep going, because this is, I love this teaching. 1 Corinthians 12, 1. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12. Let's see what it says here. 1 Corinthians 12.1. This is Paul who was speaking to the Corinthian church who was having a misuse of the gifts. Just to make it clear, he makes that clear in the letter. Um, they didn't have order in using the gifts, and they had a misunderstanding of the gifts. And in fact, they even had a misunderstanding of um, that they're just for yourself. And he had to share that all the gifts are for the edification of the body. Right. So there was a combination of things that Paul was correcting them on. But he says in 1 Corinthians 12.1, now, concerning spiritual gifts, yes. brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. Considering spiritual gifts, do not be ignorant. Okay? So, let's keep going. Verse 4. There are diversities of gifts, but the ho same Holy Spirit. Right. Amen. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And that's important. Right. We're going to see the gifts are given and distributed through the Holy Spirit. Your calling is given by the Lord in All Ephesians right. 4. The Lord Jesus himself gives you your calling for your life. Remember, we're talking about Jeremiah 29, 11, walking in your gifts and your calling. And in some respects, those two cross over each other. So don't get too confused by it. But gifts, you remember, your gifts and your calling are irrevocable. And your calling comes from the Lord God Almighty. But the gifts are under the control of the Holy Spirit, how he ministers them through us. He is right. the captain of the guard. Let's show that. There are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Holy Spirit. Hmm. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Holy Spirit. Right. To another, faith, a gift of faith, so you can believe when you need to believe by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. Now remember, this is being given to the church. This is not the apostolic age anymore. This is talking about the body of the church of the Corinthians. 
All these gifts are meant from healing, miracles, signs, wonders, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, tongues, prophecy. All those are listed in here. They're all meant for the church age that we live in today. <laughs> I love it. To another, the working of miracles. Wow, miracles. Hallelujah. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, divers' tongues or different tongues. To another, the interpretation of those tongues, which combined with tongues then becomes prophecy. And here it is, verse 11. But one and the same Holy Spirit works these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. And if you go on to read in that chapter, it describes a body where he gives one person an arm, another's an eye, another's an ear. We all desperately need each other. And he distributes the gifts differently to each one. Right. And he asks the question, do all prophesy? Do all speak in tongues? Do all have the gift of healing? And the answer is no. So don't desire that which is not your calling, but desire that for which he has called you for and the gifts that he has for your calling. Those are married together so beautifully by the Lord. In other words, if he calls you as a prophet, he has specific gifts for you, for your calling right, and for your right. sphere of influence. If he calls you as an apostle, he has specific gifts for you, for your calling, for your sphere of influence. And even those gifts can be distributed over time. Right. And we've all been witnesses of that. Mm -hmm. Now, we're building a good foundation here. <clears throat> now, I have a question for you. Are we supposed to desire these gifts? What does the word of God say? The answer is yes. 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 We are supposed to desire these gifts. We are supposed to desire them. We are supposed to, even as Marisol did ask to go up to heaven, we're, we're, we're not going to share the specific gifts that were given to her, but she was given specific gifts. And we, mom and I, were given specific gifts. Yeah. Now, these are private to us. I'll just tell you that right now. But we were all given gifts on this trip. Yeah. Beautiful, Lord. Thank you for those gifts. And, and they had a price to <coughs> pay for the gifts. And he said, you're to use these gifts with no compromise and with love when I show <coughs> you. Oh. And I was like, wow. He says, and I That's have right. plenty, plenty. I saw streets with buildings full of gifts from the, all the <coughs> ages. And they're there for you to wish and get them. I'm just a housewife who loves the Lord and who asks for a gift. You can get a gift too. Amen. 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 And, and your calling is lifelong. And your gifts are lifelong. Remember, your gifts and your calling are irrevocable. And so <coughs> these are things that you want to know from the Lord God Almighty. And again, we're going to pray a prayer at the end to activate this in, the, in us as a body. Um, but let's, let's dwell on that just a little bit more. Go to 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Because I want to make sure we understand <coughs> this interaction with the Lord and what we're to ask for and desire. So it says, now you are the body of Christ and members individually. <coughs> And God has appointed these in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, and after that miracles and gifts of healing, helps, administrations, variety of tongues. You see here, gifts and callings are being interspersed. And he asks, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret? And here it is, verse 31, but earnestly desire the greater gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. And he speaks about the fruit of the Spirit, which is love. So he tells us to earnestly desire those gifts. 1 Corinthians 14.1 says, again, desire those spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 14.39 says, again, desire earnestly to prophesy, speaking about specifically one of the gifts. So the Lord is putting on our heart to desire earnestly the greater gifts, the gift of prophecy, and the gifts in general. These are all in 1 Corinthians 12 through 14. So now we build that foundation that we can and ask for these and desire them and seek them. Let's keep on with the teaching because you'll see where we're going to go. Now, <laughs> how do we get these gifts? Well, well, well. That could be a teaching for many lessons, but I'm going to give you what the Word of God says about some of the ways 
you receive these gifts. Go to Romans 1.11. It's a really important scripture. This is Paul talking to the entire Roman church. And he says, For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, so that you may be established. Hmm. So Paul has a calling as an apostle. And part of that goal, calling is, in his apostolic calling, he has the ability to lay hands on people and distribute spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit leads him to do. He is nothing but a conduit. He simply lays his hands, and the Holy Spirit then distributes those gifts accordingly. Right. He is led by the Spirit, right. and he works right. as led by the Spirit. Right. Right. He is not independent. He doesn't make his own decision. And you know why we know that? Because the Word of God says, Paul says in another place, he says, do not be hasty to lay your hands on everyone for every gift. He says, don't be hasty doing this. Listen to the Spirit and be obedient to him. Because then I will tell you the same way you can be trusted with these gifts when you walk in holiness, surrender to God, you've denied yourself, taken up your cross and follow him. In the same way, you can be the livings of rivers of living water and pour out these gifts to others because you are responsible and you listen to the Spirit. Amen. You don't give it to people when they're not ready. That's right. Very important. That's right. So, we're going to pray, but you're going to see when we pray, we're going to give full authority to God in heaven what spiritual gifts to activate and how to awaken you in your callings. That's why we're going to be praying for dreams, visions, and revelations, so you hear from God directly your calling. Because I am telling you, I have a firm foundation. I want you to know I stand on a rock because I know my calling. That is so important for each of us. We don't have this uncertainty. We can't be tossed to and fro in the waves, desiring things that aren't of God, and just desire what he has. Hey, I want out what Joe has over there. Joe's got a powerful anointing. I want that. Well, goodness gracious, how do you know that's the gift and the calling for you that God has? If everyone was the same as Joe... Joe may have the gift of um, prophecy, but what about the gift of healing over there? You may be the one he's calling to have the gift of healing. Don't desire what is not of God for you to be called in. That is so important. That's why you seek him with all your heart. And that's why we're going to release dreams and visions and revelations so the Lord will speak to us and we will hear what each of us is called for and what gifts in those beautiful packages he will deposit in each of us through the Holy Spirit. Unique and beautiful for each one of you. Dexter? Yes. We need to stop chasing people and asking them to impart that gifts on us. Stop it. You need to wait for the Lord to tell that person to impart it on you. You know, and, 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 and then also you need to walk in such a way that the Lord imparts directly to you something beautiful and unique. Yeah, that's right. That nobody's walked on. They're that's all right. up in heaven. They're all in heaven ready to be released, all these mantles. And he wants to give them out. You don't have to have Mary's or Dexter or mine. There are plenty up there, powerful ones, that the Lord himself can give to you directly. But you got to pay the price. Amen. You got to pay the price, and the price is holiness. You know, and, and before I had the visitation, I woke up like around 2 o'clock in the morning, and I was on fire. And it was like, and the Lord said, this is my refiner's fire. I'm burning things from you. And I said, and I said, Lord, thank you that you're changing me and that you're burning things that are not of you within Amen. me. Amen. And, you know, and, and I think Lord. they're refining me. And, Amen. And I think that's part of the reason why he took me to heaven. That's right. You need to be refined. And refinement is an everyday thing, dying to yourself every day. And becoming every more day. like our precious Lord and Savior yes, Jesus. Yes, every day. Amen. Every day. Amen. Well, hallelujah. And, and what is the purpose of the gifts again? Let's go to Romans 12, 4. And I love this because we are such a beautiful body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. We are his bride, but we are the body of Christ. And he says, 
For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. We're each unique. Hmm. So we, being many, are one body in Christ. Hallelujah. To love each other as one. Hallelujah. And individually, members of one another. Individually, we're members of one another. That's why when one falls, we surround them in love and pick them up and pray for them and do whatever is necessary to get them back on their feet. That's what it means to be members one of another, at least to me, a meaning of it. Amen. Having then, verse 6, gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. And the Lord gave me a scripture, my grace is sufficient for you. And he gave me a word, so I'm just going to release it briefly. There are many in the church who are weary and heavy laden. And I mean weary and heavy laden. And he reminded me of Moses. In Moses, Numbers chapter 11, he has the people of Israel crying out bitterly and complaining to him because they're tired of eating manna and they want meat. And they were remembering what they had in Egypt. At least we had meat in Egypt. They're crying out to him. And Moses is fed up. And he says, Lord, take my life. If you're not going to do something with this, I cannot take this burden on my shoulders. And you know what's amazing about this? Is the Lord heard him, obviously, because Moses was a friend of God, and they talked to each other. Hallelujah. And you know what the Lord did? He took from Moses part of his anointing, and he said, get 70 elders, and I will pour forth my anointing onto the 70 elders, and they will share the load for you. So all these grievances, all these cases you have to settle, because he was basically like a judge for them. Every little grievance between the people. You stole my cow. You did this. You had this. He had to settle them all personally. And he got a word from his father-in-law, and then the Lord said, listen, I'm going to share your burden with 70 others. And I love it. All 70 of them, you may forget this, but all 70 of them went to heaven with the Lord and had a feast as heaven was opened. And then Jesus, the Lord God Almighty called Moses up and he received the Ten Commandments. Read about that in Exodus. Wow, all 70 of these that he shared the burden with went up to heaven, saw heaven. Hallelujah. So the point of all this is there are many of you that are weary and heavy laden. And the Lord has a Lord, uh, the Lord has a word for you that you're taking too much of the burden on your own shoulders. And he's saying to you, simply cry out or pray as Moses did, Father, if you're a pastor and your church is asking you to do everything, you just simply pray, Father, I ask that all the gifts be manifest in the church and all the callings in the name of Jesus. And Father, yes. bring forth every gift and every calling into the church. Yes. And I ask you, Father, take the burden in the name of Jesus off my shoulders and ha help me to share it with others, Father, because I cannot take this burden on my own. Bring forth those that are faithful in every gift, Father. Activate those gifts and bring them forth in a beautiful harmony of a body. And he will do that in the name of Jesus. And you will no longer be weary and heavy laden. You watch what he'll do. People will come in. If you need people in the music program, he'll bring in beautiful worshipers. If you need people to visit the sick, he'll bring in an elder with the heart of, with the gift of compassion and mercy and a gift of healing in their hands. And you watch how that person will come in and all of a sudden take over that ministry of visiting the sick. God answers those prayers. And I love the fact that he does that. You are not to take all the burden on your own shoulders. Mm -hmm. Ask for all the gifts to be surrounded by him. Hallelujah. So we're getting, we're getting a good foundation here. A good foundation. Earnestly desire the gifts. What the gifts are. What the gifts are to be used for. So let's keep going here and reestablish one more thing. I want to make sure that I said it earlier, but I want to make sure you understand this. Your calling. An example of this is in Ephesians 4, chapter 8. Wow, talking about gifts again. Ephesians 4, 8. It says, therefore God says, when he ascended on high, this is talking about Jesus, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. There's the first foundation. Jesus goes up to heaven, and then he gives gifts back to men. Hallelujah. Amen. And it says, 
Now this, he ascended, what does it mean? That he also first descended into lower parts of the earth. We know that he went down into Hades and he captured all the old saints from the old covenant and brought them back with him because they were in the abyss. We know that from the Old, from the old Testament, that they were in the abyss and he came and brought them all up into the heavenlies because he now, his final atonement, freed them from that and brought them up into heaven. And it says, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets. This is Jesus. And he himself, Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, until we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. So again, these callings can be verified by a prophet who speaks in your life, but the actual calling itself needs to come directly from the Lord. I don't care if it's an, a dream, a vision, or if he comes and walks into your living room, hallelujah. But your calling will be known by the Lord. Prophets, apostles, others can confirm it. Amen. But the one who calls you is very clear in the scriptures. So I, can't, I should not go around and have a prophetic anointing service where I call 30 people into my house and say, I'd like all 30 of you to be prophets today. So I'm going to anoint all 30 of you to be prophets. Oh, and you 20 over there, I, you look like apostles. I'm going to anoint you all to be apostles. No. Make sure your calling comes from him directly. And Dexter, I want to say something. The apostle is the only one who walks in all the gifts, evangelism, teaching, gifts. prophetic. Right. Only the apostle. That's right. No one else. Yeah, that's so if right. you're calling yourself, you, so you need to be careful what you call yourself. Yeah. And then the work of the ministry, the gifts are for the work of the ministry. I told you about the beautiful part that I went to heaven. But let me tell you what happened after I told them and everything. I go to the kitchen and I'm unloading the dishwasher. And all of a sudden, I hear cries of people in hell screaming, ah, mm. ah. Jesus. And then a compassion hits my heart for the lost souls, for the people that need Jesus. So I was like, I have never felt that in my whole life. So I went to the bedroom to see Mary, and I said, Mary, it's horrible. I feel the pain. And she says, honey, the Lord is showing you the compassion that you need to have. For That's the right. To lost. carry these gifts. That's right. You need to have compassion That's for right. the people that do not know Jesus. These gifts are not for you to be a known and famous person. They're for the lost, to reach the lost for Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and I want to bring one more thing into the teaching. 1 Peter 4.10. Because some of you are asking, are these gifts, do I have a calling? Are these gifts for me? And the answer is, yay and yay, of course. We know that from the word, and you're getting the foundation of that. But I want to go to 1 Peter 4.10. It says, in each one, that's the same as saying in every one, in each one has received a gift. Therefore, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. <coughs> I, I want to read the next part of that. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies in your gifting. And in all things, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Each one has received a gift. That means every one of us. Now, when you receive the gift is up to God Almighty, as we said earlier. All I know is, as Marisol said, I cry out to the Lord to surrender to him, for refiner's fire to come and burn out anything that is not of me, of him in me to mold me as the softest clay that's ever walked this earth, to sanctify me through and through into the image of Christ. 
I cry out these things all the time because I know there's a responsibility that I need to be so in love with him, so sold out to him, so led by the Holy Spirit and so able to hear his voice all the time that when he asks for anything to be done, he says, who will go? Whom shall I send? Our hands go up. Send me. And not only that, but we're prepared to carry that responsibility and not use it unwisely. Wow. Gifts of God. <clears throat> now, some of you have give, been given gifts, and you've kind of let them go by the wayside. What does Paul say to Timothy? 1 Timothy 4, 14. Do not neglect the gift that is in you which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on in the hands of the eldership. So again, your callings come from the Lord, but gifts, as you can see, the Lord can call anyone, and we read that in Romans 1, remember earlier, that Paul was earnestly desiring to come to Romans and impart gifts on them. So as the Holy Spirit leads, people with that authority, apostolic authority in this case being Paul, can lay hands on people as he did with Timothy and give them their gifts through prophetic words. And that's important for you to know. So you know when someone is doing something, what is within the word of God and tested by the word of God and true, receiving gifts, versus your calling will come directly from God, but can be confirmed prophetically and otherwise. That's important for you to know the difference. But do not neglect your gift. That means it's to be used to edify the body of Christ. So Mary over there that has the healing is to have that gift ready anytime God calls on her to lay hands on the sick so that they will be raised up and healed. Because I don't know about you, but if Mary has my personal healing, because that's her calling, and she's hiding and going, well, I don't know if this is of God or, or, or just ignores it, boy, I'd be awfully sad knowing my healing isn't, is over there and God had intended for her to bring it to me. I would want to use my gifts to bless my brothers and sisters every time he calls me. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what we want to do is, is leave some time here to pray. Thanks, sir. Yeah. You know, we were, when we were driving in the car, um, here Mary was talking about how what happened last night was already manifesting with, you know, the Lord has shown her somebody that was called to the ministry and how that all led for her to call that person yeah. and God used it. So I would like for her to share that. How okay. that one thing, it was like it actions, it just impacts everybody. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> well, we've been doing a lot of praying, and I thank God for this studio. And Bishop Nick is here with us, Amen. Uh, CNO, and it's just wonderful. But uh, the last few days, we've really been in a, really an awe visitation of the Lord. And my callings, dreams, visions, and revelations of God, it was told to me of prophets. Then the Lord himself showed me a vision and called me that I was to bring people out of darkness into light with dreams, visions, and revelations, and he showed me a river. And I brought people out of the dark side to the light side with, with what he showed me. So Amen. that's my mandate and my calling. Amen. But uh, the last few weeks, Bishop Nick, I won't talk to her because she's here, God has been, I've been seeing an angel by Dexter, a big angel, pure glory and white, and he's got three boxes with ribbons and bows on them. And I kept watching Dexter, and every once in a while the power of God would come on Dexter, and that, that presence, which I know it was an angel, would whisper to Dexter. <laughs> and I would get so tickled, and the little Amen. puppies would even see it. They'd turn their head and look by Dexter, you know. <laughs> and... Uh, it was really weird. And the Holy Ghost said to me, I have gifts. I have gifts, and I would see the gifts. He said, I want to give to people. Yes. This was about four days ago. So we had a service last night way up in Huntington Beach. And it was with uh, precious Andrew. Yeah. And they're young. They're, Andrew's only 36. The pastor and all of them are younger. 
And uh, I saw the angel in the service with these box of gifts. Amen. And I was going to preach. I started preaching on heaven, but got tickled because I talked about some of the things you go through, you know, Bishop, and you guys with families, you know, kids and all. Amen. And the, the joy of the Lord hit the place, and Amen. the angel said, tell them I have these gifts. Amen. I want to give these gifts away. So I started talking on the gifts of the Spirit, that God has them here for us. And all the young men started giggling and laughing. And there was a young man there that plays music named Charles. You know, keyboard, like an angel. And all at once, a big opening appeared on top of the church. And glory started coming down. And all those kids we laid hands on fell out in the floor laughing the floor. and giggling. We, all over the Amen. place. With the joy of the Lord. All over here laughing. Even the little baby, he was... What, eight months old? Mm -hmm. Benjamin was sitting there laughing. Yeah. Yep. It was beautiful to see God's power just bless them because there had been a lot of trials. And the laughter and the joy, it went on, what, for an over an hour, Mark? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't preach. We couldn't do nothing but praise Amen. the Lord, you know. Yeah. It was awesome. God brought words through the gifts of prophecy, yes. strong words through me to some of the people in Barsaw and Dexter. And they were just laying out in the aisles and everywhere. And the Spirit of the Lord, uh, one of the men saw a vision of Jesus. And he saw the face of Jesus smiling with like a big smiley face, <laughs> wanting to give us joy. Amen. And uh, it was just remarkable. So w with that, when we begin to uh, talk about the gifts, they begin to manifest. And God gave the young men music. He gave the singers more writing. He spoke prophetically. There were eight of them, weren't they, mm -hmm. of the, in the music band. That's right. And they were bringing them to a new elevation. And those children got up there, and they were playing and singing, and their little eyes shut. It was awesome because God did it. Amen. But we activated the call and the gift because God told us, and, you know, we are older and everything, and we have to give it away. And so even the, the pastor laughed so hard, he almost fell off the bench. That's yeah, true. And it was, rem but the Lord kept speaking to me, activate them, lay hands on them. Amen. And we, we did that because we were a team. And Bishop Nicky, you would have loved to have been there. It was hilarious. So we carried that home with us, okay? <laughs> and we had to go to bed because we couldn't hardly walk. And, <laughs> and Marissa, I told her, good night, I'm gone, you know. And then early this morning, we're getting up because we had a bunch of business to do. And Bishop Nikki, I ran into her in the hall, and her eyes are like glass. She said, Dexter, Dexter, I said, honey, what's wrong? I said, uh-oh, she's in, under the move of God. So I moved out of the way, and she's going down the hall hard. Dexter, Dexter, come here, come here. And she began to share how we went to heaven, and that we wish we could remember, don't we, Dex? We didn't yeah. remember. But there was a little green car in there that we got into. It was, it was on a car lot at first, and the cars always mean your ministry. And we picked out a little green one. She said, I told him I don't want nothing but the best in this little green one. <laughs> so we got the little green one. That's how we drove all over heaven. It was re wonderful. And she didn't tell you about how important it is. And I'm not telling you either. And Dexter's not either. You yourself know in your heart what you have to do for God. Yep. And you have to ask God to make room, baby, for your gift. Right. Yes. Never be cruel or force it on anyone. Amen. We cannot go knocking people over and say it was the Holy Ghost. It wasn't the Holy Ghost. You just knocked them over. And we're learning this, sweetie. We all make mistakes. We make mistakes. But Almighty God is wanting to teach us like little children. That's right. And so when he showed her heaven, it was so joyful and so awesome to hear her. For about three hours, she couldn't shut up. <laughs> a talk and tell, and her little face was like a kid. Like she eat, she had eat a lot of ice cream right next, to, and lollipops. It was Amen. beautiful, beautiful. And I remember she was talking, Bishop Nikki, because I want her to hear this. I remembered she was talking when I was seven years old. I saw the same thing. It came back to my memory, and I was standing with this older gentleman, like in heaven, and he's called Wisdom. And I'm looking, because I learned that today. And I'm, Marcel's talking in my mind with whoom. And the Lord said, remember when I took you there? Seven years old. The jewels, the diamonds, the pearls. And, and, and Bishop, and you pastors watching, 
There was tables, she said, full of gifts God wants to give us as leaders, as prophets, as teachers, as pastors of the flock that are hungry. There's tables full of stuff. And if you've got to have a good character, you've got to die to your rotten flesh, and you've got to move into that realm where God wants you so right. you can claim your gift. That's right. You know it? It's, it's a price to pay. It's called dying to ourself. That's right. And when you get this gift of God, then God can activate that gift. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so these are just pr wonderful things we saw and things that God is doing in the earth is a visitation. Great visitation of God. And we're going to pray today. Amen. And uh, we're going to release the gift of dreams, visions, and revelation. Amen. Pastors watching, whoever, leaders. But I will tell you this. When God reveals stuff like this, there's a, there's a price, price you've got to pay. You can't go with the world and expect to serve God too. There'll come a day of reckoning that God will show you a crosswords of your life. And you have to take the road God wants you to or your life's miserable. Because God handpicks all over the world different nationalities, different people to do different things. That's right. And when you step out of that calling, uh, you're an heir. And, it's in, and take direction, take understanding, and repent and go back to God when he first called you to do something. For example, Bishop Nebby, I had a wonderful, wonderful friend. Oh, my goodness, I'd go all the way to, to uh, way up north to hear her play music and sing and sing and sing. Well, she became pastor of a church. She Two years, she did not play the keyboard. She gave it away to her cousin. And every time I'd go there, the Lord said, she needs to take her calling back. She needs to take her calling back. She needs to get out there and play because her anointing people would fall out. Deliverance would come. I've took pictures of her with fire under her feet. Oh, man. And wow. he said, she needs to. So I had a talk with her and told her I loved her. She said, well, I got too much on me. I got to run the church. I got to do this. I got to do that. I can't play no more. Another person told her. And another person. Well, she went to Hawaii. She wasn't even 55 and ate some fish, and she died. She ate a poison fish and died. I mean, it's very serious to obey, but do what God called you to do. I'm real serious about that. And we have to know, and once we do that, he'll bless us to do others. Yes. That's right. So Dexter and I were talking mm -hmm. that we need to, that since God gave me the gift of prophets and I've had the hands laid on Amen. for it, I need to release it today yes. to people. Yes. Hallelujah. And, and I do it a lot, but today, whatever God wants, I want to be obedient. Yeah, amen. And Dexter, tell him real quick yeah. about Jim Mal Maloney. Is that his name, James? James? Maloney. Mm -hmm. Real quick, what's going on with him? Yeah, I mean, that, it's, it's on, on the internet. SidRoth.org. If you go there, and and it was an email blast that he did with a, a story by um, James Maloney, where he was translated to a part of Russia, and there were hundreds of bodies of people there, people that were very sick, very sick, Deformed. people that were missing limbs. Conjoined twins, cancers people that were up. blind, were deaf, cancers, everything. And what's amazing about it, and, and this is, you know, I'm just going to stop. All because you have not experienced something yet in the Lord, do not mock it. Test it against the word of the Lord. Because the word of the Lord has translations in it. The word of the Lord has things that we're speaking of in them and the healings that you're, you're going to hear occur. They are in the word of God. In fact, Jesus did them himself as well as Stephen, Paul, Peter, others. So he was translated to Russia, which means he was actually taken there. And when he was translated, he turned to his left, and Jesus was standing next to him. And Jesus basically walked into him, and as one, they started to lay hands on people. And he says within 15 seconds, every sickness was healed. He didn't have to plead. He didn't have to cry out. He didn't have to fight the devil. He didn't have to rebuke the devil, nothing. Just with Jesus in you, the hope of glory, he simply laid hands on each one of them. Conjoined twins were separated. To two different people. To two different people. <laughs> Someone who had just say? a torso grew arms and legs. You can read about this. This is the word of the testimony <clears throat> uh, through SidRoth.org. Go ahead and read about it. And about Creator. Tell him that's real important. He's and at the creator. end, what God said to him, I'm going to 
try to remember it. He said, hmm. God said to James Maloney, this after three, years of three hours of ministering through him, he said, am I not God? Yes. Am I not the creator of all things? Is there ever anything that is impossible for me? I'm going to say that again. Am I not God? Am I not the creator of all things? Is there anything impossible oh, hallelujah. for yes. me? Right. And with that, <clears throat> James was translated back into his bedroom, mm -hmm. and his wife found all the dust and everything from and Russia mud. on his shoes. Yes, and that was These things happen. In the Bible, people were translated. Philip and others were translated in the Bible. Read it. You and, know, and as we're getting ready to pray, call OCN. Give you prayer request. Call us. You know, and if you if you don't want to call a station, write to Shalom. Go to shalomshalom.org and send us your prayer request, and we will pray for you. You know, and and also after we pray, send your testimonies. But reach out. Amen. If you need healing, reach out. Amen. If you need a miracle, call. God is moving there's a movement of god i feel god's presence and i feel tonight there's going to be healings release impartations Amen. miracles there's going to be a mighty move of god a mighty yeah. move of god <clears throat> and remember in the this room in heaven there were mantles from past people who had never passed them on to someone before they died <clears throat> for example i have a mantle of intercessory prayer that someone 85 years old be passed on to me that is the way it's meant to be done there are mantles from the old and from all the old errors and then there are new things that she saw that the lord said to her have never been released in heaven before new gifts never before hallelujah released from heaven onto this earth yeah. and i don't yeah. know about you but i want and even as james maloney was translated i don't want to limit yes. god amen Preach i want dude. his Dreams yes. to be one with my dreams in the name of Jesus. Yes. I want his visions yes. to be one with <clears throat> yes, mine. Hallelujah. I want the impossible to be done yes, to please yes. him praise and bring God. him glory, honor, and praise. Amen. And so, Mama, let's pray. I'd, I'd like yes. you to pray and activate. All right. yes. Father God, in Jesus' name, we come yes. to you this night as a team, Lord, and as yes. an audience out there, Lord God. And yes. Father God, freely I have received these gifts yes. of dreams, visions, and revelations. Yes. And freely I release them, Father, on the yes. television audience, that they may have them, those that need them, those you've chosen for this, yes. and Amen. activate Father. them, God. Amen. Let the fire of God in Jesus' name come upon them. The yes, refiner's Lord. fire, Father, on yes, everyone Lord. watching. We agree. And allow that fire, God, that holy fire, whoo, glory to God to begin Amen. to penetrate any hardness or any lies or any deceit. That's right. Take it all away, Lord Jesus. And Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we release that gift. Amen. Dexter, you want to release a gift too? Amen. And Father, Amen. we just praise you and oh, thank God. you. And Holy Spirit, we just give you free reign to release whatever, acti activate any gifts that are dormant, even as was spoken to Timothy and others, that we will not, any gifts we've neglected, yes. Father, forgive yes. us. We yes. repent yes. in the name of Jesus. We repent in the name of Jesus of our sins before you, Abba, Father. And now, Abba, Father, I ask for you to wash us clean by the blood of the Lamb. And, Father, in your loving grace, that your grace is sufficient for us, activate these gifts in us afresh and anew. And, Father, even new gifts, we surrender in the name of Jesus to walk in your calling that you have us, not to veer to the left, not to veer to the right but only to walk in a perfect coin and a perfect will yes, of you, Father, yes, all the days yes. of our life in the name of Jesus. Now, Abba, Father, as you said, I will give good gifts to my children. We ask you, Lord, to bless your children with these good gifts. Activate them. Holy Spirit, have free reign in every household. Bless them with the awakening and the gifts that come yes. from you, from the very throne room of God. Receive yes. in the name of Jesus the beautiful gifts that he's prepared for you specifically and none other as is pleasing to God most high. Receive in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Say thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, sometimes he gives you that and, and you just have to walk in it. I, 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 I saw the roof of my house go back 
And I said, I'm going to heaven now, I'm going to heaven. And I know he's going to take me back because he told me he was going to. So walk in it, faithfully, believing, trusting, being a good steward of the, of the gift the Lord has given you. Amen. Amen. And just call us, you know, and again, I want to specially send greetings to our viewers in Italy, Romania, Hong Kong, Australia. Uruguay, Amen. Peru, South Korea, Amen. Spain, Guyana. These people Australia. are watching us from Amen. these places. We Amen. bless you. Amen. Also, I want you to go to our website, shalomshalom.org. I want you to tell us your testimonies. Amen. I want you to send us your prayer request. We love you. We want to hear from you. We want to pray for you. We want to stand in agreement with you Amen. if you need prayer for your family Amen. or for your son or for if you're yes, sick. Martha. Amen. Don't, don't forget that. You know, and, and also, you know, we have a special gift. Um, this is a, I don't think we're going to do this again, but um, Mary, Sister Mary Kay. You know, if you partner with us financially this month, we're going to send you a divine revelation of heaven. So pray to God and ask the Lord to show you if he wants you to partner with us financially so that we can continue to teach the church and to reach out to the lost in order to fulfill the great commission, to go and preach Amen. the great news of the gospel yeah. all over the world and that's what we want for people to get saved the gifts are for people to get saved so that that's the right. gospel is proclaimed and then it's confirmed by the evidence of the healings and the word of knowledge amen right so please pray and ask to god partner with us by going to shalom shalom.org we love you very amen. much we'll see you next week it's been a blessing to have you, to be with you today Amen. at OCN with Reverend P Dexter Pelser. <laughs> I'm so in the spirit, I don't even remember my husband's name. Mother, Amen. Mary Kay, and myself, we love you. <clears throat> Jesus loves you. Amen. And remember Amen. to always tune in to OCN, your 24-hour favorite TV Amen. station. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 29 11. We Amen. love you. Hallelujah.